Hello everybody, welcome to section 3. So this section is going to cover a little bit more on the geologic aspect of having to do with groundwater. Uh, first, what is going on underground? We're talking about caves, caverns, and sinkholes. A cave is going to be a cavity, a big hole in the ground that is large enough that uh, some of it is dark. It's not all exposed to the sunlight. I have a cavern, a sort of cave, which has the ability to grow stalactites and stalagmites. We call these together speleotherms right? and sinkholes, where you have some sort of depression hole in the ground, which is directly caused by a collapse of the surface layer. You see this term, right? Soluble rock. This is any sort of rock which over time will dissolve in water, be uh, sort of eaten by the water over time. So this diagram kind of gives uh, an example of the whole system. We have a collapsed sinkhole here, which leads down into our cavern system, or cave system. We have individual chambers. We have here our stalactites. We have to hang on tight to be able to stick to the ceiling. And our stalagmites, which if they grow tall, might reach the ceiling. Uh, if these two meet the middle, it's called a column. And so we are in soluble rock something which will dissolve by water as a slow process over many, many years. But still, water will take a little bit away each time it passes through the limestone. And slowly over time, it will eat away to form these larger cavern systems. So this is a sort of step-by-step -step model for the end here. So uh, carbon dioxide in the air will combine with rainwater to form carbonic acid. Not you know, a ton of carbonic acid, but just a little bit, just enough to make rainwater very, very slightly acidic. And this is what gives it the ability to dissolve all of the materials in the subsurface, in this case, limestone. So slowly, the water eats away at the limestone, dissolves it, and leads to these bigger and bigger sort of caverns or cavities. Eventually, so much is eaten away that the water table is lowered. There's just more space underground for it to fall into. And uh, as the water table moves down, some of the remaining limestone material, which has been previously dissolved, is precipitated as stalactites and stalagmites. So dissolution, what, what exactly does that mean? We have disintegration or dissolving of rock material. Right? You put you know, a little bit of salt into a pot of water and it dissolves. It doesn't disappear from the universe. Instead, it is broken apart into its constituent ions, and it's essentially eaten by the water. It's still there inside of the water as those little ions, but it's no longer uh, there as a solid. It's been integrated into the water. Sense. So in our case, geologic point of view here, we're talking about water passing through soluble rocks to make underground cavities. And further more to create things like cave, caverns, and sinkholes. Uh, you could have sinking streams, cases where you have a river flowing along. And then, for whatever reason, it just drops down into the ground and disappears. You have springs, and the sum total of all these things put together makes a sort of landscape known as a karst. And typically, when you see caves, they are formed by dissolution, the results of dissolved rock by water over long periods of time. So uh, what are the materials that tend to dissolve and tend to form these sort of cave systems? So as far as minerals go, halite, very, very similar to salt. You might just think of this one as being salt, even though it isn't exactly like your normal table salt. Uh, gypsum, which we actually use to make drywall, sort of similar in terms of how it forms to salt so it forms through the evaporation of water, but if you reintroduce water, it will dissolve back into it. You can have limestone, including things like travertine, in the case where the limestone is being precipitated by hot spring, chalk, where the limestone is being made up of tiny, tiny fossils, or coquino, where you have a limestone that's made of different shells and animal parts, the hard parts. Uh, furthermore, marble, which is metamorphosed, cooked limestone, can also dissolve through water and dolostone, something of, it's like a cousin of limestone, except it has magnesium and calcium in there, instead of just being mostly calcium. So, karst topography, 
have a little illustration over here. We have uh, this sort of complex landscape which incorporates both the rock and all of the water in the system. We have many small closed basins, sinkholes, cave openings, caverns, weird sort of drainage patterns for how the water moves. Uh, this is typical of any sort of region. Bedrock is something that is soluble or soluble carbonate rock. So limestone, marble, these are both carbonates. Well, one example in Arizona, Karchner Caverns, you see on the right here. It's about 50 miles southeast of Tucson, discovered until 19, not discovered until 1974, and not uh, told anybody until about 1988. So keep chill. Didn't open to the public until about 1999. Uh, even though it took many, many thousands of years to form this thing, not been touched by humans at all until somewhat recently. Tens of thousands of years to be able to grow. What we're seeing over here are stalactites, stalagmites, and our columns going all the way up and down. We have about 2.5 miles total of passages, of course. Uh, well, you can go here and walk through the caverns, but you cannot get to all of them. Have a little bit of time here. We'll see an example. We have some of the different trails. You have the little portal tunnels, which are there so you know, help people get from one major area of the cave to another. And we can also overlay here with the next two numbers in the access code, which are 1, 3. And see, so you have the different names for all the rooms. Uh, the discovery was all of this over here. I believe somebody saw it bubbles at the surface, some sort of gas escaping here to the entrance sink. Went down and started exploring and found something a lot bigger than maybe they expected. So what is our sequence of events? What is our story here? So comparatively long time ago, 350 to 300 ish million years ago, we have the original deposition of the rock materials, deposition of our sediments. Uh, comparatively much later, 15 million, about 5 million years ago, we have basal range faulting. San Andreas Fault develops and relieves pressure on the southwest United States. Once this pressure is released, it leads to extension and to normal faulting. We have subsequent dissolution relatively recently in terms of geologic history. Right? Uh, back here, 200,000 years ago, is our oldest identified sphere than in a cave. Could be a good packback question to, you know, how do they know it's 200,000 years old? Where does this figure come from exactly? You know, how do you date something like a stalagmite? Uh, have a major period of speleothem kind of growth shortly afterward. We have a, a bit of sloth remains that have been identified in the cave, dated to about 80,000 years ago, as well as uh, bat use, bat droppings and remains being found in a couple of the rooms shown in the previous slide here. And well, all of this time period here, right, the dissolution of the cave and the subsequent activity in here, you have to imagine an environment, Arizona, which was significantly more wet and humid than what things are today. So, of course, you have this final period where things are getting more arid, growth declines, and Arizona slowly gets drier and drier and becomes what it is in the present day. This is uh, U.S. karst map, all of the karst landscapes in the United States. Uh, obviously, I would expect students to uh, have all of this committed to memory for an exam. You will need to know everything on the slide. Of course, I am kidding. Uh, you see here in the southwest, we have regions of heightened amount of karst topography, a little bit in the Midwest, and remember this, the entire state of Florida and even some things that are Florida adjacent is all one big cave system, in a sense, as far as the subsurface goes. Final unit, final section, we're going to talk about water use and scarcity. See you then.